Hi, I'm Alan McGrubby, and welcome to our Scopology 101 Program 6. Uh, what I'm talking about today is the use of an oscilloscope to measure current using some kind of current probe or current clamp. And the Selig company offers uh, quite a variety of current clamps, and I'm only going to show one type in this program, and then I'm going to show you another type of very novel way to measure current. Uh, let's start with the traditional current clamp. You're aware of the, of the ones that are kind of like a magnetic circuit here where you can open up the, the primary uh, of the transformer and put a wire through here or clip around some large conductor and that's actually your primary winding then the secondary is your output. And the, the units that we sell are all of the sort of generic universal type and they can be used with any kind of oscilloscope. They're, uh, <clears throat> they're active in a sense, they require a battery, they can be zeroed and they often have uh, a low range and a high range. This particular one is a 600 amp capacity or ampacity, so it, it only has the one range. And it's available uh, from our English supplier Pico Technologies, um, which makes very good products. So uh, we have current probes for LaCroix scopes specifically that match up with the special input connectors here and those are also active and are actually controlled by the, the oscilloscope controls that you use here. They're very convenient, they're very precise. Um, so having said all that, uh, what I'd like to concentrate on is a, is a very novel piece of equipment that we have here also from England and it's made by TTI company and it's a it's a unit called the iProber 520. I've got an example of one right here and instead of using a transformer principle it, it has a, a device called a flux gate magnetometer and it's and the flux gate magnetometer is actually embedded in the probe tip of this unit right here which you see in black. It kind of looks like a chisel or a, or a little screwdriver and it's coupled of course to this amplifier and again it's it's a universal output can be used with any oscilloscope so what I'd like to do is just uh, mention how to set it up it's actually quite easy if you have a if you have a trace that you want to measure current through on a circuit board for instance um, often the problem comes up that you have to cut the trace and put a, a loop of wire between the two cut ends and then you can stick one of the smaller uh, precision current probes on it. The purpose of the iProber 520 is so that you don't have to cut the trace. So what, what you have in effect are doing is you're taking the, the little chisel or screwdriver end point of this, uh, the iProber and you're, you're placing it perpendicular to the long uh, dimension of the trace that you want to measure the current on. And um, you also uh, position it just either by touching or you can hold it in a, in a positioner like I've got this one over here. And um, it, is, it is somewhat important to make sure that the iProbe tip is held normal to the surface of the circuit board. Now here's what you have to do to get it set up. Um, the first thing you have to do is you have to use a, a millimeter scale to measure the, the track width on the board. For instance, I want to measure, or we're, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to measure between this uh, switching MOSFET um, connection to the low side of the transformer primary of this transformer here. So what we're going to actually do is see the transformer primary current as this MOSFET switches on and off. So the, what I did is I measured this and I found that it had uh, it has a width of two millimeters. So what you do is you refer to this card and it says, okay, here's track width on the x-axis. So you go up here to two millimeters and it says, okay, well, what you should calibrate this unit to is something just under 2.5 volts peak to peak. And so um, <clears throat> there is a little calibrator well on the um, active interface box here. You put the probe tip in here and you, uh, you adjust the PCB sensitivity knob until you see two, two and a half volts or approximately peak to peak on your scope screen and then your unit's all set up to work with that particular trace. That's really all there is to it. Um, this box also can accommodate um, 
various bandwidths. It's got uh, limiters of 2 hertz, 500 kilohertz in full bandwidth, and the full bandwidth on this is 5 megahertz. And it also has a mode switch where you can use a little clip-on toroid for, for wires, or you can switch it to traces. So we've got it on trace, and we've got a 500 kilohertz bandwidth here. So what we're going to do is we're going to power up this little board that we've been working on for the past couple of days. When the fan comes on, then we'll know that we've got a, a working power supply. Then I'm going to take a single shot right here, and you can see immediately. Uh, you recognize from the, the last program we have the, the voltage across the MOSFET in yellow. Now we've got the current through the transformer primary in uh, magenta right here, and so you can see. This is the zero line right there, and so you can see current flowing one direction here, then going and reversing, coming up, and then flowing again. The, the low points here is when the MOSFET is actually saturated, turned on. So you can see the current rising right there. But you can see how, how clean the traces are and how easy this is to do. So if you have any questions about the use of the iProber or you, you're interested in knowing more about it, uh, feel free to give me a call. This is really a really a very useful and exciting way to measure current on, on circuit boards much faster and you don't have to destroy the board in the process. So we recommend this. All right, well, thanks for watching.